There is a lot to get through, so if I hurry, I apologise, but I hopefully will have some time at the end to answer your questions. Um, if you get stuck, uh, raise your hand, um, and I may have time to stop and help you, <laughs> or I will attempt to try and stop and help you. Right, so everyone's got their Mari open? Yep, yep, yep. Everyone nods? Everyone nodding? Nodding? Yep. Sweet. Right, so right click and do open archive. Then navigate to this directory. You have no X drive. Uh, but yeah, essentially, once you've navigated to this directory, uh, open up the uh, click the archive, and then click open, and just do that for all three. Right, so while you guys do this, uh, my name is Anthony. Uh, I am a texture artist at Framestore. Uh, I used to work on the Mari team uh, for three years during its development, um, doing testing work, design work, uh, and something that they called, God, what was it called? Uh, product specialist, which meant that I would do anything and everything that was required. So some coding and creating assets and stuff. Uh, I did a master's in digital visual effects, which you're probably not interested in, at Kent. Um, and yeah, now I'm working on Guardians of the Galaxy, and I briefly worked on Gravity, but not long enough to be able to get a credit. Sucks. But never mind. Uh, right, so there's only one person here who's sort of used Mari before. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so Mari is a projection-based texture painting tool. So I don't know, have any of you guys used Mudbox before? Hand in the air if you use Mudbox? Okay. Uh, so Mudbox paints actually onto the geometry in 3D space, whereas what Mari does is it essentially paints in something called the paint buffer, which I will now proceed to show you. So the paint buffer is basically like a giant sheet of glass that you paint onto. I'm going to close this door because it's loud. Uh, yes. So these little these little corners that look like a sheet of glass. Um, is one of the reasons why Mari is such a powerful tool. Um, because you're not painting directly onto the 3D surface, you're painting into the sheet of glass. It means that you can have ridiculously sized resolution textures as opposed to painting actually onto the 3D surface at the resolution you want. Which, if you tried to paint 32K a giant splat across something in Mudbox, it would probably take a while. Unless you're using a Quadro 6000, in which case you're a very rich man. Um, so yeah, Mari does it based on a projection system. Which so, what you can see here, this is the paint buffer a la sheet of glass that I mentioned before. So the way that Mari works, so the way that Mari works, sorry, is we'll paint. Um, so as you can see, there's paint in the buffer and it looks like I'm painting onto the 3D geometry. But in fact, what I'm doing is painting into the sheet of glass. So when I'm happy with what I've done, so let's give him some eyebrows, grumpy eyebrows because I've lost my whacking pad. Uh, Mari bakes it down. So using this system of painting into a sheet of glass, essentially, um, the GPU is able to project onto the 3D geometry much higher resolutions than you would be able to bake, uh, than you would be able to paint directly onto the 3D geometry, which is one of the reasons why Mari is so kick ass. Um, so, 
Yeah. Uh, if if I if I rotate it before baking, then it essentially stays in the stays in the paint buffer. Exact amount of. Uh, yeah, so baking will project it down onto the 3D geometry. Yep, and in the glass surface, uh, it now has a resolution. Yep. If you change it, you have to, if you limit it or you have to set it before you bake the thing in? Uh, so the paint, the paint buffer settings uh, can be changed, but the problem is, is because uh, Mari uses the GPU so much, everything is a huge jug like a huge juggling act. So the higher the resolution you set your paint buffer, you might find that painting is slower, uh, projecting down will definitely be slower. It will sort of depend on how many UV patches you're painting across. Um, so, you know, another reason why Mari was created um, at Weta was for King Kong. So I think on King Kong, like, I think Kong himself was something like 500 different UV patches on just half of him. So they needed something that would be able to paint into these huge UV sets without, you know, spending thousands of hours having to do it in Photoshop. Um, yeah, so it's you can you can change the resolution. You can go up to 16K. You should get a warning saying, "Whoa, the GPU is not good enough." Um, and I would always heed the warnings because we put them in for a good reason. Um, if you set your paint buffer too high. You might start getting artifacts uh, when you bake down and you won't notice these artifacts probably till like three or four hours later when you're wondering why everything looks really pixelated and fucked up but again I mean if you if you really want to paint details and your GPU isn't good enough then the best piece of advice that I can give you is just zoom in um, because yeah it's sort of it's sort of the easiest way of doing it. I mean, unless you want to fork out for a six, the Quadro six thousand, just four grand. You know, it's got six. You no, know, it's got twelve gig of memory. The new Quadro six thousand, but yeah, it's worth it. Um, so yeah, so Weta created it. Um, it was really kind of pushed to the limit, tried and tested on Avatar. Um, I'm sure you've all seen Avatar. You've all seen the giant dropship. There's a nice little poster back there of Avatar. The dropship was over a thousand UV patches, um, which is a lot of information. Uh, so yeah, developed at Weta and then the Foundry, uh, then the Foundry bought it and I'm very nervous now because he's got a camera. Um, so the Foundry bought it uh, in probably about 2009 on the proviso that Jack Greasley, who was the chief architect at Weta, came with it. Um, then there are a couple of post houses that started using it. It was primarily only in Linux. Um, Framestore were one of the first. Uh, I was bought in in 2010 to work to help work on the Windows port. Um, and then I think probably the crowning achievement was the implementation of layers, which I don't know if any of you ever saw Mari 1.6. Anyone Mari 1.6? No. Well, it wasn't very intuitive and it was a bit crap. Um, so for 2.0, we had to pretty much rewrite almost all of Mari to include what is now the schmancy fancy layer system that I will be showing you later. Um, oh yeah, and also anyone here a Mac user? Mac users? Ah, I knew you'd be here. Uh, Mac, uh, Mari is now supported on Mac, so if you want to give it a go on Mac, you should feel free. It was one of the most requested feature requests that we had. Um, Jesus. Right, so I've talked a bit about the paint buffer. So there are a few advantages and a few disadvantages of using a projection based system. One of the plus sides is that if I paint onto here and I think, right, what I really want to do is I want to move some of this stuff around, uh, it allows me to because it's not actually been painted onto the 3D geometry, it's just being kept in this glass panel, so to speak. So you can warp it, do whatever, you can apply adjustments to it, change its colour, do whatever you should like. Um, again, due to the nature of projection painting and high resolutions, uh, 
a paint buffer system really allows you to handle all these thousands of textures that you'll be using at 8K, you know, even 16K. 